Admiral Bill Stubblefield, two star. Good morning, Rob. Let me quickly give a plug for presidential series uh, at lecture at Shepherd University tonight. Uh, Harriet Pearson, who is a, uh, uh, a very accomplished lawyer with cybersecurity, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, and the like, will be given a talk tonight at the uh, Bird Center uh, on Shepherd Campus. Starts at 6.30. It's free. Uh, do not have to sign up. Do not have to register. Just attend if you care to. It should be very uh, exciting. Harriet, as I said, is an accomplished lawyer. She's also a very good speaker, uh, makes things uh, a complex subject readily understood. So if you're not doing anything tonight, encourage you to join us at Shepherd University, the Bird Center at 630. And uh, I believe I met her at your table at the hospice. You did, uh, you did, yeah. There. And again, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, what are the risks to us? What is the future? So, right, Welcome back. Matt Miller, co-hosting as well, the Hall of Famer. The risk is great, I think, the risk is especially great, with yeah. the AI. I, just, I saw War Games with Matthew Broderick. I know, I know the score. Mm. I know what time it is. <laughs> Remember that movie, War Games? I do. Matthew Broderick mm. it was a little scary there. Our guest in this segment is Stacy Roan from the Boys and Girls Clubs of Eastern Panhandle, who brought dessert. Actually, breakfast. They're breakfast. blueberry muffins. Yeah, they are. They're, yeah. Yeah. They well, are. there's four of them. There's five of us. So Dylan, Bill, Matt, and Mike. Well, I get one of them. The other, the other. No, I was going to say, <laughs> Matt and I have a solution to that we each take two apiece. That would uh, that certainly would, solve that, that, would that problem. Solve the problem. That's right. Well, Hornby doesn't eat sweets, so that's, that's not uh, what Hornby was saying a second ago when he brought him in. He I, he always turns down sweets. That's that's not his deal. Uh, you know something else, not that. Uh, Stacy, there's a lot going on with the Boys and Girls Clubs, and includes this here too. For we, this is uh, the wine and food event. Want to make sure we publicize this on Sunday, October the fifth. That is in partnership with the Kiwanis Club of Shepherdstown, mm -hmm. and also the Charlestown Kiwanis. I think supports it as well. Uh, it is on October the sixth. That it, and it's at Bricks, and it's it's just a lovely event. If you like wine, enjoy wine, and want to help support the clubs, uh, we welcome you to come out. It's in the afternoon at Bricks and. Mm -hmm. Um, did, did I misspeak and say the fifth earlier? Mm -hmm. in, in my brain, I think I said the fifth. Yes, I yeah. heard you say fifth. It yeah, is the sixth. Yeah. It is Sunday the sixth, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Don't go on the fifth. You can go to Bricks on the well, fifth. Well, you can go to Bricks on the fifth. I'm sure they would love they would to love serve that. you a, a lovely meal. But, but they won't help but you. But to support us, if you want to help help us, then please come on the sixth. Yeah, um, yeah. Tickets can be purchased online on our website at uh, bgcepwv.net. Um, or I will forward over a flyer if you want to post it on the TV10 website or um, Facebook do. page. That would be lovely. Yeah, it's $50 per person, mm -hmm. and that gets you what? And that gets you a um, display of some amazing foods prepared by the chef at Bricks and um, several different wines to taste, and he'll give um, some pairing notes so you know mm. – uh, what what pairs well with or which wines pair well with which foods? Oh, very nice. And there's a, a group of women. We've had them on the show before from Shepherd, who each year make donations to certain organizations. They get together and select who's going to get the, some of the money that they have and raised and what have you. And you folks were the beneficiary of that this year. There is so women investing in Shepherd, and it's a it's an organization where women can make a it's a five hundred dollar commitment per year, and it's. It's really giving one woman one vote. Uh, so all of the women who support that endeavor through the year have an opportunity to select which, uh, which grant recipients they would like to see receive those funds. This is the second time that we have been, um, been the recipient of that award, and what a blessing it's been. Our first time we received that to help us um, provide stipends to college students who would come in and mentor our kids. And it really it helped us to increase that program. It built our partnership with Shepherd and also Blue Ridge um, to bring in their education students and social work students. Uh, and, and in those first years, we were able to give them a stipend, and it's just created um, some great partnerships. And this year, it is to provide um, – so Boys and Girls Clubs go through a safety assessment each year, and one of our external reviewers said, you should have windows in your doors so that there's clear visibility and sight lines. Um, typically, we leave our doors open so that we, we create that um, safety measure. However, um, you know, with – with active shooters and, and whatnot, they said you should really have windows in your doors and then blinds 
so that you know if you, we need to close it off so that it's not visible and then also um, our clubs didn't have AEDs prior to oh. this grant and that's something that um, they're very costly so it wasn't always something easily um, put in the budget um, but very necessary so they're providing that as well as some outdoor um, surface resurfacing in our Jefferson County Club. Yeah, as a coach, every two years I go through recertification training, which includes AED training. So will everybody in the Boys and Girls Club have to undergo training for the AEDs? I, oddly enough, we do. <laughs> um, we're, we're trained. Our, our staff are trained. We just didn't have the mechanism in place to, to have that in, in premise, or on premise. So we now will have AEDs as well. That's great. How many will yeah. you get? Um, one per club. So there'll be three total. So this is across all three counties. Berkeley, Morgan, Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Bill? Uh, good morning, Stacy. Good uh, morning. You have a very ambitious building campaign. Uh, how's it going? Well, stead slow and steady wins the race. We have two local million-dollar donors. We're seeking more additional um, local funding. Uh, we have a $2 million congressional appropriation from um, bipartisan support with Senators Manchin and Capito both. Um, so it was wonderful that they both value the Eastern Panhandle and wanted to see our, our project advance. Uh, we have currently a million from Governor Justice um, who said when he visited with us that there, was, there were additional funds there. Um, and we've reached out to his office to go down and share where we are so far. Um, and if we can get some additional funding from his office to match local funding, um, then that will be that will be huge. So that if my math is uh, quick, five to six million dollars you've procured so far, uh, and your goal is what and to do what? It's fourteen million total. That is to renovate the current structure where the Boys and Girls Club is at 105 West John, and then to add on to the back of the building. So it's really going to about, about double our footprint. Mm -hmm. um, the addition will provide a gymnasium. If you've ever been to the club, the gymnasium is beautiful, and we've done a lot of work to make that uh, a space where, where young people can be physically active. But it's also on the third floor above our education center. So if we're, you know, we just, we have to be strategic in our programming. And what I'd love to see is education and sports and recreation happening concurrent. Um, so with the addition of a gymnasium, that will help us to do that. And then in the current structure, we'll turn the downstairs into a state-of-the-art teen center. So young people will have screens and video boards and um, technology so that they can elevate into, you know, the next um, the next generation of, um, of what tech will, will, will look like. And Boys and Girls Club uh, plays a critical role or an important role in the lifeblood of the community. Uh, what, is your, what is your number of participants that you have and has it been growing over the last couple of so years? It has been growing and, I, um, and our numbers steadily increase and, and again, we're over three counties. So we have a yes. club in uh, Morgan County, one in Berkeley and one in Jefferson. In our Berkeley County site, our numbers are, continue to increase because of our partnerships with schools. Uh, we are currently in uh, South Middle, Orchard View, Burke Street, Winchester Avenue, and then Hedgesville. We added Hedgesville so we can build our presence out in the county. Um, we're also adding um, vans to our fleet. So, you know, eventually our goal is that we're, we're transporting more children in. Um, that's been a, a slow and steady process, but, um, but definitely needed. Matt Miller. How do your partnerships with schools work? So the, so the school-based programs, um, they are funded through the State Department of Education through a 21st Century Community Learning Center grant. So we, our staff at the club, we write the grant, we manage the grant, and we coordinate with the schools. And they've been very supportive in, in allowing us into the schools. We, our first um, 21st century grant, I want to say it was in 2006, maybe. So this has been a longstanding partnership. It's not anything new, uh, but it's really allowed us to 
be a partner in education as opposed to, you know, there's, it, there's no competition in that game. We all want to see kids win. Yeah. So at the end of the day, the school teachers in the daytime hours are providing that education. And then we're working in the after school hours to provide education along with recreation. Uh, and then, and you said, uh, Bill, about the club being a, you know, a stable support in the community. We provide dinner and snack for kids in the after school and um, lunch and snack during the summertime. So we feed them, we mentor them. Um, our, our kids are experiencing things that, you know, 40, 50 years ago, they were not my experiences. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're working in that trauma-informed space so that, you know, we're supporting children where they are and helping them to grow to become good citizens. At the end of the day, we want our young people to graduate from high school with a plan for their future, whether that's higher education or working in a trade field or stepping right into the workforce. The goal is that they are becoming a productive member of society. And and that's our pledge to our community is we want to see that through. Three facilities. You mentioned Berkeley, Morgan, Jefferson County. How many staff are you up to now? Uh, we're probably right now at about 50. We can, we've had as many as 80 um, during my tenure. Is that, that full, are, full-time and part-time or just mm-hmm, full-time? Both full-time and part-time. How many full-time, full-time? we're about nine nine full-time staff right now. Mm-hmm. We have a site director at each of our locations, and then our admin team uh, covers HR and um, business management, um, grants management and operations, and Right now, um, I'm wearing the resource development and CEO hat. Do you Are you permitted to have volunteers as well? We do, and we background check every volunteer and every staff member. Um, in addition to that, because we're working with, uh, with young people and we have to make that pledge that we're ensuring the people that are with them are safe, uh, we do a background check upon entry, and then we just started this year doing continual monitoring. And you've won some awards recently. Would you like to go down the list of those? We you, have. You did well. So we, the Eastern Panhandle was um, blessed to be able to host the, the Hall of Fame awards as well as the, um, the state awards for Boys and Girls Clubs of, of the Eastern Panhandle. And I want to give a shout out to the Convention and Visitors Bureau because they helped us support that event. So Mark and Susan over there were phenomenal in helping us in their board uh, was able to give us some resources to help put that on. So we hosted on um, two Fridays ago, we hosted at the Holiday Inn, the Hall of Fame and the the State Awards. And our club, our club cleaned up. I think we did pretty well. We had the Program of the Year Award and we do a program in partnership with Horses with Hearts and it's called Horse Powered Reading. So we want to advance literacy skills in our young people um, through that partnership, and we have some of our teachers that work with the kids in arts and STEM, and then um, Kay provides the the horses and a, an educator who works with the students in literacy skills. Um, so that one program of the year, we had a uh, our board member of the year was Dr. Shaquita Howard Bostic, and she's worked with our clubs and our staff and board to ensure that kids are getting fair and equitable treatment. We want to make sure that young people, that, that they're all playing on an equal playing field. Uh, so she's been phenomenal in, in working with us to make sure that we are we're an inclusive and supportive organization. And 90, 97% of the kids that come through our club, and we, we survey them every year, so we know this for fact, um, of the children that were surveyed, 97% said they feel safe when they physically safe when they walk through our doors, and 98% said they feel emotionally safe. And Stace, those numbers are you, you can't beat well you can beat that slightly yeah. but slightly it's, yeah. yeah. Stacy asked a while ago, and you may have given the answer, but I missed it. How many children in the three counties are affected? How many belong to the Boys and Girls Club? So last year in total, we had over 800 children. Of those 800 coming every day, we have about 200 sure. that come every day. Um, and some come for different programs, so they don't equate into our average daily attendance. Um, but we are, we're working to build that number. I'm guessing that the Boys and Girls Club probably impact more youth than any other program that we have, comparable program in the area. Is that correct? 
it's not it's it, that's a hard one to say bill yeah. because it's not apples to apples the difference between like say us and a scouting program a scouting program they go once a week or um or or a month depending on how often they meet um church-based programs are tend to be once a week maybe twice a week uh, where we're every day from three to seven there's a space and a place that's safe for young people to come into our community you say every day that's weekdays Monday obviously through friday are, are there events and things still through the weekends we do have some weekend programming um, right now um, last weekend we had camp mariposa and it's a it's a stay away camp for children who are opioid affected so we're working with I think there are about 20 to 25 children in that program and we we provide it's a one to three ratio so three children have one adult with them that's very intentional in the programming and the support that we offer because we recognize that they're coming from a really fragile place and we want to support them and ensure that they have the right mentors and they know that when they walk through the doors of the club they're going to find their person their person's going to be there and if it's to share the best day that they've had or to share that they're really struggling they know that their person's going to be there did you get through your entire list of awards by the way i did not would you like to continue our hall of fame honoree uh, is vicky bullet so it was really vicky's been honored locally through the club locally uh, but it was important to us that she be a state hall of famer so vicky was honored as the state hall of fame and um, my colleagues from around the state um, thought that i should receive the ceo of the year sweet so, um, that's something that i share with the whole team though i mean that we're only as good as as you know our our team and and our team's pretty stellar well congratulations so, on that it's nice to get some recognition you. for all your work thank you right yeah. And we'd have gotten to it earlier, but Bill cut my questioning off on the awards. I want that to be reflected <laughs> in the official you record. Cut my follow up question also. <laughs> well, and I didn't fully answer your question. I was trying to get to, yeah. you, we're bigger yeah. than just those three club sites now. And what is the age range for your, uh, your students, your kids? Six to 18. Six to 18. And I think we may have a one or two five year olds that are part of a school based program. So that 21st century program, we can't. There's no denying any child, so there there may be one or two five year olds. Ideally, it's better when they're when they're six because they've we, they've been through school, they've been through a year of school, and um, we we kind of know um, that they that they understand a little bit more structure. You used a word a while ago that I think is so important, and that's fragile. And a lot of, and a lot of your kids are at a fragile period in their life or going through a, 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 a fragile event. So it's a, uh, it's important. It's not important, not only important to the kids themselves, but the family and the community as a whole. Absolutely. And I don't think there's a certain demographic that defines fragile. I think, yeah. I think it can be any family. And I mean, we've seen through the opioid epidemic that, you know there's there's no classic family or 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 young person or adult even um that it it touches it touches every single person and probably all of us in this room so how does a family or a child get involved can they just show up at the club on let's say this afternoon school lets out and i've got a couple friends that are coming to the club i just show up with them so there's a registration process and there's also an orientation process. It's important that parents know that it's, you know, we're not a fly by night operation. We bring families in, we bring the parents in, we do, um, it's, you know, about a 40, 40 minute orientation where we talk to the families about these are our expectations. And this is what we expect your support to look like um, when your child comes to the club with regard to behavior and participation. And then, um, and then the young people, once they go through the registration process, then they're eligible to come. And, and we're affordable. It's $15 a month um, for young people. We also have a partnership with Unicare where if the children receive that insurance, they'll pay for their membership. And, um, and in the after school, I don't, think there's a, I don't think there's a program going for that rate um, that Fifteen dollars a month. Fifteen dollars mm -hmm. a month, and we can also work with families on a sliding scale. If you're a family of five, fifteen dollars a month is that can be substantial. So we certainly work with families there as well. Is there food involved? 
there's always food involved. <laughs> there's dinner and snack every day. For $15 a month. For $15 a month. How do you handle uh, disruptive ch- uh, children? We send them to Bill's house. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was an option, but yeah, we can do that. Do you- send them to the Stubblefield <laughs> compound for some work. With alligators. Work yeah. on the farm. I got about 30 seconds yeah. left for your answer, um, these days. No, I mean, ideally, we never want to do that. Yeah. But if a child's not physically safe for themselves and others, then, then we do have to say, uh, you might need a break. Yeah. Stacy, uh, again, how do people get in touch with you if they'd like to find out more about the Boys and Girls Clubs in um, Eastern Panhandle? Our website has a wealth of knowledge, bgcepwv.net, or call our corporate office at 304-263-1832. Good to see you again. Hey, so good to see you all. Thanks so much for having me in. Congratulations on the CEO of the Year Award and the oh. various other awards as well. Well, thank you. And, and thank you for the muffins. Yeah, I was going to say thanks for the cookies, the muffins. <laughs> <laughs>